Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get into that, I do want to thank you for coming to my channel and for supporting me, for all the wonderful comments you make, and for the way that you just make my channel such a pleasant place to hang out. I really do appreciate it. I'm thankful for every single one of you. The first item that I have today the title of the article is Biden and Admin Offers Mass Amnesty to Migrants as it Quietly Terminates 350,000 Asylum Cases. I'm going to read you just a little bit of the highlighted portion. While the Biden administration is attempting to look like it's getting tough on the border, which it just announced today they are, behind the scenes it's operating a program of mass amnesty for migrants. Data show that since 2022, more than 350,000 asylum cases filed by migrants have been closed by the U.S. government if the applicants don't have a criminal record or are otherwise not deemed a threat to the country. Now, since they don't vet any of these people, I don't know how they can possibly know if they're a threat to the company, country or not. I mean, that doesn't even make sense. That's completely nonsensical, but that's what they say. This means that while the migrants are not granted or de denied asylum, their cases are terminated without a decision on the merits of their asylum claim. They are removed from the legal system and no longer required to check in with authorities. The red line you see shooting up there is the not adjudicated cases. As you can see, they were way down during the Trump administration, but in the Biden administration, they have skyrocketed. I don't understand what they're doing. I really don't understand what they're doing. The more migrants you allow into the country, the more they depress the wages of, of workers, American citizens who are trying to work and earn a living. It just doesn't make any sense to me. But then two thirds of what the government does doesn't make sense to me. So I guess I'm an outlier. The next item I have for you is a report from the Senate subcommittee. They have released a transcript of Dr. Fauci's uh, testimony in January and uh, he testified again today. And <laughs> <laughs> he now admits that they had no data to prove that social distancing actually did anything. Isn't that nice? And no data that masking, <laughs> uh, no supporting evidence for masking children. It's just crazy. <sighs> Vaccine mandates. Dr. Fauci admitted that vaccine mandates during the COVID-19 pandemic could increase vaccine hesitancy in the future. He also claimed that these mandates were not sufficiently studied ahead of the pandemic. In other words, they just went ahead with them without even seeing if they actually would be useful. And he acknowledged that the lab leak hypothesis is not a conspiracy. Uh, the more that we learn about COVID, the more evil it appears that people were. And the more insensitive they were and the more they could have cared less how it impacted you and how to me. Kill all now, I, I have a video that I want to show you that uh, is an 11-year-old boy reading from a book that he found in the school library. And not just in the school library, it was on the shelf just as you walk in. It was being promoted as a book that children should read. Hi, my name is Knox Zajac. Uh, I'm 11 years old and I go to Wyndham Middle School. I'm a sixth grader. I was in the library and this book was on a stand. I'd like to read you a page. My back over my hips as I ask if we should take off, take our clothes off. And he's saying yes before I finish my sentence. He's pulling off my t-shirt, 
laughing when I can't undo his shirt buttons. He's undoing my belt. I'm reaching into his bedside drawer for a condom. We're kissing again. We're rolling over. Obviously, you can see where this is going. I don't know if it's because we're feeling especially emotional or just tired. Or these past couple of weeks have been too much. But this reminds me so much of the first time we had sex. We were both fucking terrified. And the whole thing was kind of terrible because we didn't know what we were doing. But it was good too. So good. Because we were a mess of emotions. And we were scared and excited. And everything felt new. So this sort of thing, this sort of feels like that. Nick touches me like he's scared that any minute. Now, this book was at my middle school, and it was on a stand. When I rented it out to show my dad it, uh, the librarian asked if I wanted more and if I wanted a graphic novel version. Oh, boy. So I'm that kid's father. Okay, good. I was asking for you. Yeah, I'll take another three minutes. So that's my son. Okay. 11 years old and went to his library and found that by the entry door of our library, this is the smut that he is finding, all right? I don't care whether it's gay, straight, bisexual, whatever the terms are for all this stuff, doesn't need to be at our school, doesn't need to be at my 11-year-old's library. And then as far as genderqueer, I've got a son in the high school as well, and this is bullshit. We know it, all right? We do not need to be having literature that's showing boys how to suck dick, all right? This is, I'm very, very frustrated about it, okay? And you may think that schools know the best for our children. You know who know the best for our children? The parents. And if you remember this, I was here last year talking about masks, and I even offered you proper usage for a mask, and you said I was bullying. And you know what I would like to say to everybody right now? Where are we a year later, and what has changed why you don't wear your masks right now? So what has changed in the medical field that is showing you that you don't have to wear masks now? So like I said, listen to the parents I can tell you right now, I don't work anymore, and I will be more than happy to focus my time and effort to the security of my child and children in this school, all right? I will be a thorn in your sides. So I just want you to be aware of what you've woken, okay? I'm sure that a lot of you guys are fine and great people and have nothing but the best intentions for our children, but by the fact that this has to take four months for a school to get this book out of the out of the library is ridiculous. The parents are here right now and they're speaking, and you need to listen and do something about it quickly. Thank you. You believe that? It's just, this is going on all over America. It's disgusting. It's, I don't even understand how we got here. How in the world, how in the world can school boards allow this to happen? How in the world can they do that? What are they thinking? The what IDF in the world the is the matter with these people? The now, this next one that I have, I'm not going to play for you. I just want to show it to you on the screen. The title is Breaking IDF Penetrates Deep into Rafan, Rafa, Egyptian Soldier Killed on Gaza Border. It's a uh, report on what's going on right now in Rafa. And... I'm not going to I'm not going to play this because it's too long. But I want to give you just a little bit from it. Hamas fired on Israeli tanks with anti-tank weapons from inside a UNRWRA school. Weapons were found inside the school 
in UNWRA food sacks. So, no matter what you think of the conflict over there, no matter how much concern you may have for the Palestinians, citizens who are suffering horribly right now, Hamas is ignoring the laws of war. They are committing atrocities left and right on their own people. And I read one once in a previous um, daily news clip about a leader of Hamas who said he would be perfectly happy with 100,000 Palestinians dying if he got what he wanted, which was the destruction of Israel. My question to you would be, how do you fight people like that? Do you just give up? You walk away, you say, leave us alone, like they're gonna. No, you have to destroy them to the last man. That's the only option you have. It's just like Hitler. It's the exact same thing as Hitler. And the only option we have is that Israel has is to just get rid of them. And it's unfortunate that they use innocent Palestinian civilians as shields to protect them and to increase civilian casualties to get the world's opinion on their side. But you should see through that and you should recognize it for the evil that it is. That's my news clips for today. I pray for you that you will live an abundant life, that you will be healthy, that you'll live a long time, that God will keep you safe from harm, and that you will be born again if you're not already. I pray for the same thing for every person that you love. And I pray most of all that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet out.